wrong way. That's the wrong way. Maybe the Orcuda will come visit us. They have no problem jumping this wall, by the way. No problem. Okay. I think this audio is working. <clears throat> Sorry about the Clementine audio. We've got some stuff. Some work to do over there. Okay. Kittens. Is it time to pack suitcases? Let's do it. Let's do it. So much cuteness. Okay. I can't believe it's time. Is everybody here? Where is the pencil? Well, the Stegosaurus is somewhere. Okay. Let's see. Oops. Oh, hi. You're on the wrong side of the wall. Okay, the seats go down here. That's better. No, it's too high. Never just right, is it? Okay. Okay, tiny suitcases. Exciting. Exciting but sad. There's, you can see I watch them all the time. That's, I monitor them all the time. That's one of the monitors that is constantly on in this house. Okay, kittens, what do you think of your beautiful quilts? Yeah, this one's yours. As you can tell, that one's hers. This is Pogo. If those are not so adorable, I don't know what is. Um, whoops. Kittens, where did you all go? <gasps> ah, they used to be able to be contained. Now they have more exciting things to do. <gasps> Look at that. Kittens, why are you on that side of the wall? Come back, we're packing your suitcases. Hmm. Little monkeys, little monkeys. Pixies on the counter. Okay, so, um, yeah, okay. Uh, we, of course, in here have a nice, fresh, ratty graduation hat. Adorable. I am certain they will wear them only when they're sleeping. Kittens, come back. Hi, we were just here. Um... Adorable Tartan Mousy. A few other fun toys. New, unscented, brand new toys. Um, a fresh tent. But I'm also going to send their well-loved tent. Do you have... Uh, no, I was just making them perfect, though, just in case. Um... Assorted kickers and fun toys in there. Kittens! Oh, Pogo is puffy out there with the mirror puff. 
the meal this man will possibly join us. He can get in, he has steps to get over the wall in, but then he has more trouble. Hey, what are you doing? Oh. There's a cocoa. And from a position of safety. Okay, anywho, where were we? Uh, chickens! Okay, so those are the new things. And then, of course, we have adorable scented skunk. Um, excuse me, but you are supposed to be in here. <laughs> uh, scented skunk. And well, well used tent. Um, basket. Many scented toys. Of course, nuggets, candy cane. Uh, and then scented blanket, which I will put in the crate for their journey. There's an Oracuda close up. Um, over. So you can see if the Orcuda was in. Um, I'm gonna send this scratcher home. It was originally Fifi's scratcher, but um, the Nugget likes it. Um, so we'll send that home with them. Since we can't really reuse the cardboard ones anyway. Um, so anyway, this is all their scented stuff. Um, I'm sure that the mods will let me know if I have forgotten things, which I'm sure that I have. Possibly. Hi! Oh, the puff is on the loose. The puff is entering the arena. I should bribe you with snacks. No one can see. Oh, he's ferocious. Very ferocious. When the Orcuda is camping. Look at the nugget. So beautiful. Mm. Hi, baby. You go get a tiny citrus because you're not leaving. So, are you ready to go over? You can go. Do you want to say hi to your adoring fans? <laughs> He's a nervous growler. What a good boy. What a good boy. He likes to go camping. <laughs> he helps the kittens learn respect. He's not uh, aggressive or anything, but he definitely will hiss in their face and give a good growl. Here, I'll help you up. There, you can watch us from the wall. There's kittens on the wrong side of the wall again. Where did they go? Where did they all go? <laughs> They're hard to keep 
contained. Oh, hi. Oh my goodness. Tinkerbell jumped up next to the puff and the puff did not appreciate it. <laughs> oh, ferocious. Uh, oh, diplomas. I should do their diplomas. Um, Okay, so Pogo, uh, okay, Tiny Kittens Me University has conferred upon Pogo, son of Fifi, brother to Stinkerbell, Pixie, and Nugget, a master's degree in Kitten socialization and handsome Ogo Pogo floofology. Oh, I think they're here. With highest honors in Prince of Naps, ability to sleep in weird places, cutest Ogo Pogo, advanced studies in kitten liquidity, high class glass drinker. That's true. Wear of the Viking hat and reindeer antlers. I don't think you ever saw the antlers. Oh, and that's and that's our, and that's time. Hi, come in here. Okay. Okay. Hi. Come in and um, just watch. There's kittens, so I'm gonna try to block while you come in, <laughs> so that nobody makes a run for it. And you guys are okay being on the camera, right? Yeah. Okay. This this is what is showing this one here so you can okay. see what's so if you want to avoid then you can <laughs> or actually I'll, I can, I'll tilt it a little bit so that it's there's more of an area there now it's like from the green tent <laughs> come in you can have a seat somewhere and um we have a little paperwork and stuff Oh, you can come in. This this rug is washable, so <laughs> don't worry about it. Oh my god. They're oh my. so smaller in person than they may. They, yes. They're smaller in person than Are they? They appear on camera. That's People say sure. that. And but it's always funny because they're so they look so big to me because I've seen them like You've seen so them so tiny, but, but definitely um are so much smaller in person than they do appear on camera. <laughs> You guys are going to love them. They're like the most amazing things. They're so excited. <laughs> We're I'm so going to miss excited. them. They've been like just oh, I could imagine. so joyful. Aww. Yeah, um, it's especially seeing them right from when they were. I know. Are you going to totally raise them? Oh, yes. We're going to have a flower. I'm not quite sure. Go, go. Oh my god, hi. <laughs> Look, it's your new family. <laughs> Not quite sure. He's like, hmm, that's something different. Yeah. Doesn't it smell? That might be worth a maneuver. It might smell your <laughs> new weather. Oh, exciting. Yes. No, they'll be pretty good with uh, the cats, I think, because they're pretty yeah. used to mine. Yeah. And mine are like varying degrees of welcoming. Yeah. Like the miracle kitten will just hiss at them. And, yeah. You know, so they're, they're pretty respectful. I think so. Lindsay, I think, it would take a little bit, but he's kind of a little nervous. Yeah. But I'm not surprised. I think Nugget and or Kai and Jasper will warm yeah. up really quickly. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they love the big cats, so. Yeah. I there might be a little hiss. I don't know. There might be some hissing at first. Yeah. I expect Pixie to do hissing when she yeah. goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might take a little longer. Yeah. But these guys. I think you're gonna be just fine. They're gonna be great. They're like the sweetest, snuggliest, like curriest. You're just like your mama. I know. They're you're so just cute. like your mama. You're so beautiful. Right? So I'll show you her incision just so you know what it, you know, it looks. So this is normal. Oh, it's yeah, got yeah. that bulge. Yeah. Oh, you know, because yeah. you, yeah, yeah, okay. So that's yeah. looking good. You know what to yeah. look for. Yeah, no, I can watch that. No worries. Yeah. Cool. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. And his looks great. Yeah. Like it never happened. <laughs> you always have it so much easier. I know. I know. It's not fair, is it? Yeah. 
This is like a little bit more, but it doesn't seem bothered by it. No, she's pretty good. She like if you if you pick her up, you know, in that area directly, oh, then she would get a little, little, little squeeze. But other than that, yeah, really? she just doesn't stretch well. Mm -hmm. So this is her. Um, this is the contract. Okay. So there's one copy for you mm -hmm. and one for us. Cancel is like, please take me with you. All these young kids, <laughs> hey? All these young kids. Can you imagine some quiet around here? Hey? Yeah, he's probably excited, I'll go. Oh my. You think you think I need to help you? To, are you trying to leave? Sure. <laughs> you have to lift your own side to say. I'm sorry to say hey. Well the family at home is super excited. Oh, I, I'm so excited. They're going to have so much fun. Yeah. And they're ready for, like, you know, to live their lives outside of the room. And they've been, like, yeah. destroying the house in, like, very delightful and fun ways. But it'll be more fun for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> They'll have, we have their whole place set up and oh it's all ready. I think so. they lift the artillery now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, they're, they're loading they're, themselves. Yeah. Well, they probably smell really low. Because he just went in there not too long ago. I'll put their yeah. scented blanket. Okay. Um, cool. And their scented skunk. <laughs> in there. And then they can... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Let me go. Yeah. You, no, you are like here. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to tell you. <laughs> You live here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Bunny. That's not very welcoming, is it? It's a good recovery. I know. <laughs> I know. The kittens just are just like, meh. They just take it with stride. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll try again in yeah. 15 minutes. Yeah. But I've been kitten. You and brothers are at home waiting. Oh, so exciting. Yeah. So my husband, Daryl, never had kittens. Oh, because their brother Winslow I had when they were really little. Uh huh. So this will be the first first kitten for them. Experience. Yeah, first experience for them. So, so much fun. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting. They they will get into any everything, and also um they follow around. So like you might think they're not behind you, but all they will be behind you. And so if you change directions fast, there's gonna be a kitten right there. They're so quiet. Yeah. They're fast and stealthy. They're yeah, like stealthy they're like, and fast. Yeah, we've watched all of your crazy antics on the, yeah. on the channel. They're very fun. I was just laughing so hard at Kaya when she was wearing her sock. Oh yeah. That video we posted was so I know. great. She was such oh, a champ about it because, um, see, that's a very bold, oh, that's a very bold move to attack the bunny's tail. Yeah, yeah I've been down that road before. Hilarious. Yeah. It's so cute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she was so good about the, wearing the sock. Didn't really slow yeah. her down that much. I'm sending it with you just for posterity. Of course. Although it's a bit stringy, so. That's it. <laughs> My husband's a great crocheter. Oh! So we, might have to, really? we might have to get him to measure it in there. Mm -hmm. oh. them to crochet and that would be amazing. Sweat matching really sweated for them. Not that would be so cute. Not to wear all the time, but. Yeah. It's good to keep them used to wearing things. Yeah. Just, you know, like if you need to take them on a trip or something and you want to yeah. put them in a harness or. Well, we're planning on. Garment. We are planning on harness training them. Yeah. To be able to take them out in our back garden. Yeah. So yeah, having the experience with it is really yeah. So they don't really panic. Great. Yeah. So they don't panic when we have to go on it. So. Yeah, it is nice. I've learned with Cassidy, my two-legged one, and her. She had a cleft palate, so right. she's had all sorts of weird like treatments done and things. Yeah. And they've both had to wear garments, and Every, especially him, he had to yeah. wear all sorts of things. So yeah, it's been nice. Okay, honey. You should, you should watch from above. Oh, I don't know what's here. Oh, here. Okay. <laughs> she's 
sounds like a deflating bagpipe when you pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's like, no, that's, I'm the right to the sea. Well, they're going to love their room. It's a nice big window and so exciting. Look at all the birds. They're going to love that because they haven't had much window access except when they go behind the blinds. Yes. But I usually <laughs> don't have these open very much and they haven't been up to the window downstairs. So yeah. they're going to love it. They're going to be like, what is this? Yeah, we have a couple bird feeders out in the back garden. And so they'll have a lot window right where we're going to build the big patio. So they're going to love it. Ooh, a patio too. That's our spring. Our spring project. Yeah. When the weather gets a bit better. A little bit nicer. <laughs> a little bit nicer. So this is their su suitcase. Oh. They're not so tiny suitcase. Their graduation hats, which probably when they're sleepy, though, you can do. We'll but put it on. when they're in yeah. motion. <laughs> They'll probably <laughs> attack them, wouldn't they? Yeah. But they they have, they have oh, and I need to, I don't know. I had her hat, her Viking hat. Oh um, yeah, and it disappeared. So I assume someone has carried it off somewhere and into like their lair somewhere, unless it ended up. I'm not sure what. So anyway, I will I will find that if I don't find it before you go, and okay. we'll send it to you. It's very horrible. Yeah. I don't think that someone has stolen it. Yeah. I so <laughs> carefully it's, set it out. It's hidden somewhere. It's in someone's secret lair. Yeah. Well, I we'll put the. We'll get a graduation cat photo when they're sleeping. Okay. Yeah, I think that will be successful. Yeah. <laughs> That's Not serious. right now. Look at yeah. you. You're like, I'm so bad. I know. So oh. much energy. Oh my goodness. So much energy and then you just crash. Yep. Yep. And they're pretty snuggly when they're sleepy. Yeah. And um, Pogo especially loves, he'll just like go right to sleep in a hoodie. Yeah. He's like, lo he loves it. He'll be like asleep in seconds. So... Well, these guys are... Hi! So, We're home. I'm home all day. Like, the two of the kids homeschool, so... Yeah. There'll be people home all fun. day. So, there so won't fun. be much time where they're not with or around somebody. So. They're gonna love that. Yeah. You guys are gonna get lots of attention and love. Going to love it. So, these are their diplomas. Oh. I started reading them, but then I was... Slow, so I'm just gonna show everybody rather than reading the whole thing because <laughs> that will take a long time. Someone can hopefully see it. Yeah, and there's love it. Look at yours. So cute. So I'll put that in my paperwork. And then. much pressure. <laughs> well, we've been getting everything already. I'm trying to set up our cam we have cameras for to be able to watch the movie. Oh, there. that's fun. So, been doing the same thing, trying to find the different angles. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's amazing how little of you think one camera whole room but no it it's isn't like just that and, it's all manual, then and they're always going to be in that other corner <laughs> i know that's like my whole life yeah I, it is a struggle here it is a struggle probably have to have them just to sit around <laughs> that's why i try to keep them contained but yeah <laughs> even my massive wall has failed they, they're like they can just okay, fly so right over it perfect okay and i'll find that one Yeah, we still have them for a week, so 
Um, and then this is their medical history and oh, microchip okay. info. And then this is just what, yeah. you know, the treatment. Oh, Nugget is um, blood type B. Right. Yeah, so, and she's probably going to be a great candidate to be a yeah. donor when she's, after she's a year old, so. Yeah, Kathy had mentioned that we're totally, awesome. like, if there's anything that we can help. That's amazing. Yeah. We've had, we have so many type B cats, which is supposedly unusual, but hmm. when they, because they don't carry it really in blood banks right. and they have a hard time finding yeah. it, so we've had to, like, phone tree donors for some of the yeah. other adopters' cats, yeah. and so it's nice that we have kind of a little tiny network of people when, if you need it, yeah, yeah, because that's we we have been at the vet with an emergency, and they're like, oh, this cat's type B, we don't have any blood, and you're that's the whole most horrible feeling. Yeah, then what do you, can we do? Right? Yeah, yeah, you just have to wait, and it's uh, anyway. Hard. So it's really nice that you're willing to consider yeah. that, and I think she'll be a pretty like. <laughs> Relaxed. Yeah, I don't think she'll be super stressed. So no. So we'll hope uh, hope for that. Yeah. And then Pogo is um, type A B, which is even more rare. rare. Yeah. So, um, but I don't think I don't know that. I don't know how that works with blood blood donation. I don't know. I don't think. I think A B can probably take A. Is it like a universal. It might. Maybe? Yeah, it's possible. I, I need maybe, to look into it. Yeah, there's maybe one type. Have a harder time with A, B, like, yeah, you know, some of them are more specific. B has anti A antibodies, right. yeah. yeah. So, anyway, I haven't I haven't looked into A, B yet because I thought it was just sort of theoretical, but now it's happening. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, anyway, just good yeah, to know. If there's anything, I mean, we're just we're an abbot first, so that's amazing. It wouldn't take very much to get out. That's amazing. To get um, out, that's for sure. Uh, and then tattoo the microchip, oh, and um, and then you you'll know all this stuff. But yeah. you know, getting a baseline, yeah, all that stuff is useful. Yeah. You know, all that stuff. So there's that. Yeah. So this is big yeah. enough for you. Yeah. And then I'll just put there. <laughs> all of so many pieces. That's that for you to attack. So pogos are in there. <laughs> it's very helpful. Yes. Very helpful. That. And then. <laughs> Especially Pixie. She's like refused to. I Pixie. I know. She's like almost there. She'll be there. But she's she is so much littler. But she's. She makes up for it with her. She's attitude. gotten over her little woes of... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> took a little while. Mm -hmm. But she's come around now. Yeah, she's very aerodynamic. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm going to send their scented and okay. not gently used tent. That's from Corey. <laughs> <laughs> they have a new one in here okay. also. Um, and then there's quilts. Oh, I already showed you. But what? Yeah. The, that's Pogo and that's Nugget. Really? I know. Isn't that so nice? Oh, so anyway. That's adorable. So cute. We'll have to put those out. Yeah. Definitely out for you guys. One of our wonderful chatters those are makes, those, makes those. And I can't imagine the number of hours it takes. That would take a, yeah. Oh, that closing. And then, oh, and then, um, again, not really gently used baskets, <laughs> but these are their scented it's toys. All, yeah, it's, so it's good for them to have they, that around. Yeah, they love the baskets. Yeah. So, and then this was, Fifi loves this, and it was out of the room for a while, but then I brought it back in, and Nugget really likes to scratch on it, so. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, perfect. Oh, oh you want me <laughs> Longings, people. I guess I can put this in the bag. It's got sock fluff all over it. Yes. There we go. Okay, kittens, who's excited? 
And you guys can, of course, take his collar off whenever you want to. It's yeah. just Velcro. Okay. And if you do keep it on, though, just check as he grows. Just to make sure yeah. that it's loose enough, but not too loose that it will get loose. Yeah. Enough. Where are you going? But it's time. It's time. It's time to go. This is not my time. I know. It's so hard. Sometimes they get little crusties in there. Yeah. Right? It's not, they're not like, they have, it's not like infection or anything. It's just, just from their faces. Just the normal stuff. Just how their faces are. Sometimes they keep their eye crusts in them. Yeah. Moment. We can't have you with eye crusts. But not during playtime. No. <laughs> playtime is a no-go. Yeah. <laughs> and now yeah. we do everything when you're sleeping that we need yeah. to. Mail turns off. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I get like two or three nails done at a time. Well, Winslow, their soon to be brother, he has to have gabapentin when he goes oh, to the vet. Yes. Because he's a little conflicted. Yeah. <laughs> he's conflicted. Yeah. So I have to wait to do his nails when he's on that, when he's a little bit more relaxed. Yeah. So he yeah. just got all of his grooming and nails done. Oh. So he should be, he'll be all ready to go. Yeah, we love gabapentin. Yes. <laughs> Use it to read it's mine. wonderful. <laughs> there it is. Found it. Yay. Oh. <laughs> because we always say she's she like if Gandalf the Grey yeah. and Wolverine had a kitten, this would be their Which kitten. Which are like two of our favorite things. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. We'll Perfect. get a good picture of that too when you're sleeping. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Here's this kitten. I'm going home with you. Oh, and look who it is. Nancy. It's Ratty. Ratty. <laughs> it's a Ratty. He's going to have see. some, he's going to have some fun stories to tell, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Ratty. He's seen some things. He's seen some things, for <laughs> sure. See? All right. All right, everybody. Hogo is ready to go, go. Oh, he's ready to make a run for it. Yeah. And the nugget. Oh, we'll miss you. I know. Yeah. In the best possible way. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be posting lots of stuff. So I'll just show them in the. Everyone always has to say goodbye to them in yeah. the carrier. <laughs> well, we'll post lots of videos and awesome. photos and so people can. Thank you so much for doing that. I know they were saying they were wanting to watch their tails poop. Oh, yeah. So we'll try to do a little documentation oh, on perfect. when their tails start perfect. to poop out like, uh, like BP. Yeah, so. I, it's been interesting too because they do, they crab puff and they boing. Right. But like when we have short haired kittens, they get so puffy yeah. and like their hair just stands out. Yeah. And these guys are like, oh, we don't need to bother with that because we're all right. <laughs> so. It'll be fun to see if they actually start, start fluffing. fluffing out. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. We'll, we'll have lots of videos and adventures. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Awesome. what they do with all the stairs. <laughs> oh, yeah. They've only done these a few times. Yeah. So that'll be a fun new adventure. Yeah. Once they get used to the place, they can adventure around the stairs. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, well thank you guys so much. Do you know so much. where to go if there are any... Questions or concerns? Yep, we're all we're all set. So if you want to grab their please your suitcase ready, their accessories. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All it's right. great meeting you. Yeah, you too. Have yeah. fun. Thanks. I right. do you have your papers and everything? Yeah, we put it in oh, the bag. Perfect. That's smart. All right. All right. All right. Bye. 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 Oh boy, it's been so quiet in here now. Just half the noise. There's Wolf back here. Hey, what you doing? Now, now nobody wants to show themselves. Well, big morning. So we've got Clementine on her way to her forever home. In case you missed that story earlier um oh it's possible i took out the other one and didn't put it back in hi so in case you missed that earlier um about clementine um pomelo's people 
Um, she showed up at their house. Pomelo is a feral mama cat we brought in, was it last summer or the summer before? It must have been the summer before. Um, she was a type B, she had type B blood, and all of her kittens were type A, which meant that um, in the wild they would have died because of that um, neonatal isoerythrolysis where there's a, um, the anti-A antibodies get passed from mom to kitten and then attack the kitten's red blood cells. Um, anyway, so Pomelo had probably lost most or all of her kittens previously when she was living as a feral cat. And, uh, but because we know how to, we know about this now, so we have really good protocols in place and we're able to save all of her kittens. Um, and so, uh, anyway, so these wonderful adopters adopted um, two of the kittens, but also um, Pomelo, who was coming around a little, like she was happy living indoors, but she wasn't really interacting with humans. So they've been doing an amazing job getting her used to humans and building trust and um, we love them. Um, and anyway, so Clementine showed up at their door, started showing up a couple months ago and they were feeding her and um, noticed she's a little bit skinny and, um, you know, put up posters to see if she belonged to anybody. And she, uh, nobody has come forward and she's a senior, a senior kitty. And so um, they reached out to us and um, thinking she probably needed to be spayed. And so um, we brought her in, you know, to just to do a quick spay and send her back to them. And um, it turned out she'd already been spayed and she's about 10 or 12 years old and she's got hyperthyroid and she's also has a seizure disorder. Um, so she definitely needed medical treatment and, um, and an indoor home and special diet. And so we're super, super thrilled and grateful to them for taking her in and being totally okay with all the medical stuff and um, giving Clementine, who's very sweet, um, like a, the best sunset she could possibly have. So um, anyway, so Clementine went home just about an hour ago. And um, uh, so that's amazing. And so we ended up having her a lot longer than we were expecting because of, we were trying to get her stabilized with her hyperthyroid and then her seizure um, disorder. Um, so anyway, she's doing, she's doing pretty well. They'll still need to do some work to figure out there some, you know, it takes a while to get the hyperthyroid perfectly managed. And then so she has a couple things going on health wise, but they're really awesome and they're ready for it. So, um, That's a different basket. They have their basket in their suitcase. Don't you worry. Um, Stella uh, is also going home today, which is amazing. Um, Stella is another one that we brought in uh, supposedly for just a quick spay and return. Um, and then just a whole series of circumstances happened and we had her for a long time. It feels like forever. How long has it been? Um, 80 days. We've had her for 80 days. <laughs> 
and she was she was supposed to just be um, in and out quick spay, but I don't know why why this happens to us, but she um, she had like mycoplasma and um, toxo. She had like all the things that need like a twenty eight day treatment period, and so she had her spay. We treated her infections, and then. Um, and then we were just doing her final blood work before we sent her back. And her liver was like in almost in failure. And we were shocked because clinically she seemed well, but um, they checked the blood work twice and her something was going on with her liver. And we still don't know what happened. But so that was, it's been another six weeks of, of treating that. And well, we actually haven't done like, a lot to treat it other than just wait and give we've been giving her some liver supplements and we did have to send her for a specialist ultrasound and diagnostics to see try to figure out what was going on anyway the good news is she it's completely resolved um she's com full recovery everything is back to normal um but it did take us a lot longer to make sure we just wanted to make sure she's super healthy so She's anyway doing great now and gets to finally go home, um, which is exciting because she um, is really bonded with her other cat family. And so she'll be very happy to be home. Um, anyway, um, Trent is, is leaving on the 17th. I'm pretty sure. And so we're going to send Shira to uh, finishing school at Auntie Kimsey's house because we really need the space. We need the room that they're in and Shira needs a home. Um, and so while we are waiting for her to find her perfect human, she's going to do that at Kimsey's house, which is great. Um, and then we have, uh, Banksy, who, uh, is our latest guest. Um, he is, I think he's on the other stream. I'm going to check because, yep, he's on the other stream currently. Um, uh, adorable, super sweet, floofy boy, um, looking for a special, a special home. Um, and, uh, so we're hoping that he will, someone will fall in love with him. And, and then we have, uh, Chick and Duck, who, um, are very, very sweet, um, farm cats. They were working cats, uh, and one of, at one of our local farms and, um, catastrophe hit this farm and they had a very short time to get the cats out um, and we we were super grateful that they like in the midst of total disaster they thought about getting the cats out and so um, we ended up taking them because it was like late at night and Everyone was scrambling to try to figure out what to do. Anyway, um, their their tests have come back. They're both really healthy. They're young. They're super bonded to each other. Um, their brother and sister Duck was um, nursing on Chick earlier today. Um, <laughs> so that's really adorable. So anyway, we're trying trying to um we're trying to figure out hey we're trying to figure out how to move all these things around because of um we're starting a new feral colony on monday which is going to be our biggest uh most expensive project yet in our in all of our existence and um, and so we're 
Yeah, fuzzy AF. It's fun. Um, so we're starting that on Monday, and we're going to need lots of space for cats uh, because we're running out of time before kitten season starts, and we want to try to get as many of the females um, spayed uh, before before they before they get pregnant, and there's like a huge population explosion. So. Um, so anyway, that's why we're happy to have um, Clementine and Stella and Trent and Shira kind of having places to go so that that gives us a little bit more space. Um, we have to be careful with the new colony because we know that there's ringworm there. We know there are some viruses, so we can't, we have to be very careful about our isolation protocols and our feeding protocols and um, so it adds just an extra layer of challenge for us, but um, we're hoping to get it. Where's your sister? Oh, she's watching. We're hoping to uh, have cats next week. So um, we weren't, we were planning to have like a little bit more of a strategic organized start but because of just the timeline and some of the people uh, working there think that a couple of the cats are already pregnant and while it would be unusual for them to be pregnant at this time of year uh, it's certainly possible and so um, sometimes it's hard to tell if they're pregnant or just like have their winter pudge bellies but anyway now I'm rambling about that but there are four older kittens that we're going to try to bring in because they need a little bit of medical care and, of course, spays and neuters. And so hopefully that will be able to happen next week. And then we already have some um, spay neuter appointments booked. Uh, and um, Pammy's getting her going to be in, like, super ultrasound mode. Um, and she's looking into like if there's any special settings because if these cats are obese and pregnant you have to you know it's a lot of layers that you have to be able to figure out anyway so it's going to be interesting but um we're all excited slash anxious um yeah, so we're going to have to, so, and the, these two are getting um, spayed on the 12th, and so they'll be going home probably a couple days after that. I don't think we've quite finalized that date yet. Hi, get it. <laughs> They're so helpful. Um, so... Um, So we're gonna have more 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 cats than live streams, still. But um, we're gonna. I think what we're gonna do is move Chick and Duck now that all their tests have come back negative. Um, we're gonna move them up into the dot room where Clementine was, and then hopefully someone will fall in love with them because um, they are quite delightful. They're healthy. They're not. They don't need anything special. They're just. They're young, they're adorable, um, very easy to fall in love with. And, uh, and then we'll have the basement, the two rooms in the basement for the new colony. So that's sort of the plan, but who knows if we can't really make we can't rely on our plans because they change so frequently, but that's sort of the plan as of today. Yes, the ultrasound is going to be a huge lifesaver for us. Thank you so much for that because um, trying to get, we've had so much trouble trying to get a pregnancy ultrasound scheduled. And with this colony, we aren't going to have time to 
bring cats in, wait a week or two for an appointment, then confirm they're not pregnant, then schedule their spay another two weeks. Like it, it would be a month before we could get them even spayed. We just don't have time for that. So um, this is going to be really helpful um, so that we can do those checks ourselves and um, and then we because some of our vets don't even do they they don't do pregnancy ultrasounds um, and so like if so anyway so um, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a huge help because we can we can do it on intake or um, ideally on intake but depending on um, um, whatever else is going on we'll, we'll be able to do it before appointments um, and that will be good I'm pretty sure I was dreaming about a million kittens being born last night about kittens being everywhere because that will be our reality soon um, I know an X-ray would be amazing. I don't think we're I don't think we're allowed to uh, have access to X-ray technology without all of the certifications and licenses and all that stuff. Sadly. Oh, what what does the AL in the Brambles catalog stand for? That's a valid question. Um, it's um, uh, I was. I was just trying to figure out a quick way to group the kittens together. And since we're going with um, city names for the names in the colony, because that was the only thing we could find that was like, had enough options that will hopefully be enough for the number of cats in this colony, because we're expecting hundreds of cats. Um, so then I was like, oh, well, I'm just gonna preface it with like something short um, and so it's just this, it's just a state abbreviation in alphabetical order. So I thought if we group like litters to get, anyway, it makes it, you know how, like I have the colors, the, the colors all are start with the same, like all the ginger cats are T's and like ginger and white is C. A lot of these, anyway, the idea was it's a way to group, group them by color in the catalog, but also we want to be able to group group them different ways. So it's just a naming convention that help, so that they're together in the when you look on the available page, so that we know that they're kind of from the same litter. I know that was like the longest answer over something that would have been so easy to say. <laughs> ah. So they're U.S. states, yeah. So Alabama, <laughs> and MRI would be amazing too <laughs> for us to have. Sadly, I don't think we'd be allowed. Mm. But um, yeah. So and we've also talked to our other vet um, about changing some of our protocols so that we can minimize our like stressful post-surgery interactions like I'm anticipating we'll have lots of ear infections and you know maybe some other things that require antibiotics and um, instead of doing pain having to give them oral pain meds twice a day for a couple of days um, we're um, we've asked for them to get like an ex we use extended release pain injections at Mountain View, which is really nice because it gives you a nice steady pain coverage and then we don't have to like stress them out twice a day to give them a syringe. And uh, we use our Convenia antibiotics a lot with feral cats because it's an injection and it lasts for 14 days. And that again, spares the these scared feral cats from having to get kind of handled and medicated twice a day. So. Um, and also we can then potentially uh, return them a lot faster 
which means we can get more uteruses off the street. So anyway, we're working on a lot of things behind the scenes to try to make this as smooth and efficient and effective as possible. Um, but also don't have, don't have all the information yet, but there are going to be a lot of dirty ears. Yep. Lots of, although the adult cats look pretty, they look pretty healthy. They're definitely, they've got some pudge on them, which is nice for, for like winter. It's been a very cold winter, so it's good to see them all pudged up. Um, Yeah, so we're expecting a couple of hundred cats, uh, and, um, Kitten, come on! And so we're going to have, I think we're going to be overflowing with pregnant cats and kittens and ringworm, ringworm kittens, and we're going to need lots of adopters. Yeah, they're eating um, 30 pounds of cat food every day. 30 pounds. They are feral. Yeah, it's a, it's a feral colony. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so we have started, we, so they, and they are broken into sub colonies throughout this property. So we had started, um, uh, providing food to one of the feeders um, who is feeding one of the colonies and so we've been providing him with about 40 pounds of kibble a week and then the the property owners have been feeding um, the rest of the cats and so uh, we're going to be taking over um, I think some or all of that. Uh, so it's going to be interesting and it's definitely going to be, um, we have, I've been adding food kibble to our um, Amazon wish list um, because we're going to be going through, I think about $1,800 a month in food, which is a little bit scary. And, um, yeah, it's definitely going to be expensive with rising vet costs. I was talking about this uh, a couple of days ago, I think. And um, like, for example, we used to be able to get a ringworm PCR, which is like a test for ringworm. Um, it used to cost about $40 per test. And you need about, I would say, a minimum of six, but six to eight tests per kitten. Um, so $40 each, but now they're almost $90 each. So if we have, you know, 400 cats and they each just needed one PCR, that's $36,000. Now we won't be doing a PCR on every cat that we bring in just for a spay and neuter and then return. Like the ones that are in and out fast, we're not gonna test. But we will have to test all the kittens. Anyone that stays with us longer um, will need to be tested. And then anyone that's positive needs, like I said, six to eight tests. So, uh, and that's just one example of how much prices have increased in the last, I guess, two years. Um, and then we have longer wait times to get vet appointments. So that means that slows us down and it costs more money. Anyway, it's, it's times have changed and we're rolling with it, but, um, we're definitely going to need you guys to continue to support us so that we can get this done. Um, uh, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be amazing. And uh, we're pretty excited. Yeah, we're gonna need we're gonna need a a lot of stuff like yeah, a lot of like lime sulfur dip and 
the med the oral meds for ringworm are also um, kind of expensive and uh, vaccines, microchips, all that stuff. Um, most most of that stuff we can't put on the wish list, unfortunately. But um, yeah, and also stuff in the U.S. is a lot cheaper um, and. Um, also, if you factor in the exchange rate, um, but then if you try to bring it across the border, you have to pay um, high taxes. You have to pay a lot in taxes. So Canada doesn't make it very easy. Um, and things are more expensive here, sadly. But um, but so that the actually the price the the price of the one on Amazon is is really good. Um, it's very competitive compared to what we can get locally for the quantity. So anyway, it's going to be interesting. So I will keep you posted and, um, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'll know a lot more after next week because I've only been there twice and um, currently I'm the only one that's authorized to go on the property. Um, so that will be interesting. Um, but yeah. Oh my goodness, impressive. <laughs> She's so streamlined, look at her. So aerodynamic. <laughs> Get it, you deserve it after all that. That was very impressive. I will, um, I'll add some cameras to the wish list. Um, and uh, and probably some other supplies also. Um, yeah, uh, the reason I'm the only one authorized so far um, to go on the property is because we, we do have to build trust with our property owners. Um, it's, it is asking a lot to allow strangers to come on your property and, um, you know, set up a bunch of stuff. We, we take pictures of the cats. Um, we do, we do protect their privacy and we never talk about locations or names or anything like that, but, um, it is a lot to ask. Um, it is intrusive for us to be there and also um, because we it's it's a farming community and um, there have been issues with um, animal rights people um, which have made farmers um, mistrust any kind of like um, animal rescue animal related person and so we have to, unfortunately, repair the damage that has been done by those groups. Um, and uh, we have to build trust. And um, the people that we have worked with, we've worked with multiple rural farm property owners, and they have been so kind and compassionate. And, um, and so... Um, we want them to feel safe with us and that they can trust us. And so anyway, it's a, it's a process of getting to know them and um, demonstrating our trustworthiness. And then we, um, we can expand. We can expand from there. So um, yeah, so like it's part of kind of our whole thing where we like, 
we don't like judge people we don't shame people we just want to help and i think that's kind of a newer attitude um in anyway it, it's just it's that has not been the experience of the farm community um largely and um I said thank you after I had met with the um, the uh, owner. Um, I thanked him, and he kind of like was taken aback by that. He was like, "Did you just thank me?" That he's like, "This is such a thankless," and he kind of like was um, caught off guard by that. And I that made me sad because I just I know anyway I was. Anyway, I'm not going to, we don't need to talk, get into all that, but um, we're very grateful to them for giving us a chance. And also our, our um, other property owners have vouched for us. And so I think that goes a long way. So we do try to have good relationships with the people that we work with because um, that is, that benefits everybody. If it's, it's not always possible, but that is, that's how we like to do things. So, I, yeah, so, yeah, I, I, many of you know what I'm talking about with the animal rights stuff. Um, they, there have been some actions that have not been, not been helpful to animals or to, or to farmers and it just it makes things more difficult for everyone so that it's not it's not a productive way to affect change in my opinion anyway um yeah so yeah um and yeah please don't please don't post anything in chat about that topic because it does get triggering for people and um, we want to keep this like a safe place to be. Um, yeah, the, um, and it's a topic that's very emotional for a lot of people. Um, anyway, so um, they do know that they, they did check us out online um, before they, they uh, let us come in. And so they've definitely checked us out thoroughly and gotten recommendations and stuff. So, um, uh, yeah, so they're a little bit perplexed. They're like, why do you do, <laughs> they're like, it's not going to cost us anything. Why do you do this? How do you, how do you do this? And I was like, well, we have some really, really wonderful people around the world who, who want to help us help people and cats and um, that's how we're able to do it and we do it because we love cats and we want to spread compassion and alleviate suffering and anyway, look at me, look at me rambling for hours. Um, yeah, so. So anyway, um, it's exciting and uh, I was up all night, my brain was busy trying to think about what's the best approach and how can we be most efficient and like do we, the area that we are, have access to initially is not where the, the main ringworm area and so is it better to like prioritize, I think ideally I would like to start in the ringworm area and try to get as many of those females spayed before they start having ringworm kittens, but I don't know that that's an option necessarily. Anyway, it's a lot of rambling in, inside my head. My head is rambling. All week it's been rambling and it's gonna continue just rambling. <laughs>
You know, poor island gardener with the, the finger nubs. So. Boop. Yeah, that's right. It's a bramble ramble. Oh, that was incredible landing trajectory. Ah. Uh, I think that's all I have to ramble about anyway. <laughs> I was listening to music for cats for quite a while with Banksy the other day. How do you still have so much energy, so much rambunction? Your sister is ready for a nap. Ah, so, and I'm also trying to think like before we get started, what I was trying to look at like, what is the vet school at the University of Guelph? Are they doing any research on feral cats? Like UC Davis, are they doing anything where they would need like a fresh, feral cat colony. I haven't gotten very far with that, but I, we're definitely going to get DNA samples from all the cats starting at the beginning. Um, it would be interesting also to blood type the whole colony, I think, but that again is going to cost probably more money. Um, so I'm not sure. I think I think we have to be I think we have to be a little bit more strategic than in the past about how we're spending money just because of the how expensive things have gotten and uncertain economic times for you guys who support us and uh, anyway just going to be have to be I think a little bit cautious. But at the same time, you know I'm like dying to know all the things. Anyway, we'll all figure it out together. <sighs> we don't have a vet school uh, locally. We do have a vet tech school. Anyway, I am very grateful for you guys and your support because we have been able to accomplish so much already. And this is just going to be another super learning experience. And I'm just trying to figure out what is, what is it that we want to learn this time and make sure that we set ourselves up to learn it from the start. Um, so far, it's just us on this project. Um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but again, because of the trust stuff, um, it's just going to be us for the beginning. And um, and possibly, though, if we do need help with like um, like a huge numbers of kittens, or if we get into a crisis situation. Um, we do have some really great rescue friends like Vokra and um, the people who helped. There's kind of like a loose coalition of just really amazing rescue people who um, we kind of like bounce ideas off each other and get asked for advice and um, help each other with situations. And so um, at some point we may be able to expand. But I also feel um, more confident going in because, because of the Happy Forest, we know that a colony where we've cataloged 421 cats, um, we were able to stabilize it. It took us five years, but we did stabilize it. Um, to the point where there are no pregnant cats showing up for the last two years. 
and so and now the cats are just getting old there and so we know that the, that TNR and our approach to TNR works it just takes it just takes time so I'm not sure how much time we will have but so there are still a lot of unknowns about this colony but we will we will start to figure those things out So if you would like, if you would like to help, we need, we do have a couple of wonderful cats that need homes. You can see on our available page. So tinykittens.com slash available. And um, donations are always extremely helpful. We will need to do some fundraising, I think, um, but we're not doing it. We're not going to do it until probably next month, really, because we want, we know it's been like holidays and Everyone kind of needs a break from spending money, I think, right now. But um, we have we have some of our amazing um, longtime donors and supporters have already reached out um, about um, doing some matching donations, um, maybe next month. So, in the meantime, if you feel like it tinykittens.com slash donate has all of the different ways that you can donate. Um, and uh, there are many other ways to help that don't involve finances, um, like sharing posts on social media and being advocates for spaying and neutering. So. Can opener wants world peace and a calm chat and for me to stop talking. <laughs> yeah. So. Bleep. So anyway, I don't think I don't think I have anything else interesting to say. Yeah, uh, I don't think we're gonna go for like any media attention at this point because we don't want to. We don't want to make the. We don't want to draw attention to where we're going or what we're doing there. Um, so um, probably once we've done a whole bunch, maybe you know down the line sometime we'll do a story about something interesting that we've discovered, but um, at this point we're not going to be seeking or doing any, like, any media. Oh, uh-oh, I did you do on my laptop. So many things have changed. That's my, that's my bad. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, if you sign up to be a VIP, that's a really that's a really amazing way to support us because it helps us to have a little bit more stability and predictability in um, how much is being donated so that we can plan a little bit better. Um, but thank you everybody who is talking about donating and considering it. You guys, um, you, will, you do get to see the work we do 24-7. Not all of it, but you get to see as much as we have the cams and computers for. Um, so you see how the money is being spent and you can decide if it's something that you are comfortable supporting and would like to support. And if, uh, if you don't want to support financially <clears throat> me, or aren't in a position to do so, then we love just having you watch and hang out and be part of the community. So don't feel pressured to donate. But we do we do appreciate and need donations, but but we don't want to ever make anyone feel like they're being pressured. 
<clears throat> so, anywho, I know I keep saying I'm going to stop talking and then I just keep talking. It's horrible. Yep, I'll put some cameras on the wish list. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I will try to do some some videos <clears throat> from the uh, Bramble Colony, but again, just have to be careful and very mindful of um, privacy issues. Um, so I don't think I don't think there will be live streaming, but. <clears throat> perhaps at some point. And yes, many of you have noticed the, the destruction of the chairs. You should see like the, the sides are all shredded. The ottoman next to the camera is like shredded. Everything is, everything in this house is ruined. <laughs> everything has been destroyed. They're so cute. Yeah, I mean, maybe we, maybe we, um, we would love to do another fix-a-thon at some point. So if we can plan something like that, then I think um, I could probably get permission, um, you know, to like do something in, in a specific way. I just have to, I'm just being very mindful of um, not doing anything that might make them uncomfortable or compromise privacy or anything like that. So there's only like two feathers left for you to get. Yeah, it's going to take a while for me to remember the names. Um, I used to be able to remember things, but now I'm old and tired and my brain is like um, a goldfish. I'm like, I have like a goldfish brain. And so um, it will take a while to learn the names, but it is nice with me going every day. Um, I, will, I will learn the regulars for sure. Uh, Fix-a-thon is like when we plan like a, a huge, like a big weekend where we do like a lot of trapping in one day and then we do a ton of intakes late into the night and then uh, in the morning we send the cats to the, to the vet like we did. We've done a few at Mountain View where they open the clinic on a Sunday for us and then vets volunteer their time and we get a bunch of text volunteer and we even had a dental specialist at our last one doing dentals. We have a surgical specialist who was like really fast at doing surgeries and she removed some polyps and did, it was amazing. So, <clears throat> so, um, so a fix -a -thon is just like really intensive couple of days of trapping and spays and neuters. So, but we have, it's, it's a lot of, um, it's a lot of effort and, um, uh, organization and logistics, but, and particularly the vets have to be willing to like basically give us the whole clinic because it's, you know, we're bringing in ringworm and viruses and feral cats. They have to be like, you know, on board with feral cats, the way we do things. And, um, so um, anyway, and we've live streamed a couple of those, like from basically from start to finish. And then we let, we live stream the recovery room after, cause we, we like to recover. Well, depending on the situation and the space, um, we like to recover them kind of communally and then return them. But, um, anyway, so it's, it's kind of, those, those events are pretty fun, but they're also really intense, intense and exhausting. Um, but hopefully, hopefully we'll get to do something like that. I know all we have, and I've also mentioned this multiple times, but we have a, a severe veterinary shortage um, that I think is just growing. Oh, ferocious. Um, 
which means all of our vets are exhausted and um, techs, there's a tech shortage. There's just a lot of, um, there just aren't enough people to, to accommodate the number of, the amount of need in the community. So even for just like regular pets, um, everyone's kind of overloaded and understaffed. And so um, I'm not sure in the new, the new world, um, if we could pull something like that off. But anyway, we are talking about it. Yes, our nanosurgeon. Are you two gonna be exhausted? It's only gonna be the two of you now, downstairs and upstairs. Anyway, Yes, this perfect litter was such a nice palate cleanser um, to have like a healthy Oh, Bunny's gonna produce a hairball for us live off of her Oh, that was Oh Off of I'll have to show you because I'm sure you want to know that's her that's her favorite hanging out spot up there she just launched it launched it off the edge you can maybe see it has splattered its way down <laughs> the kittens are like what just happened how did you do that <laughs> anyway that's real life <laughs> That's rescue reality right there. <laughs> or Kuda. Okay, I'm gonna go for real. Um, I guess, I think I'm gonna bring these kittens downstairs because they probably need to refuel after all of this energy. Pixie is not, not at all on board with hairballs. She thinks that something, something, has happened that she needs to be very, she needs to walk very slowly away. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Blame me, you're so ferocious. There you go. You're fine. You're fine. <gasps> All right, kittens, come here and we'll... And the Oracuda also, the Oracuda loves to eat hairballs after they've been vomited up. And she can't do that because of her palate, because it will give her an infection. So she's trying to figure out a way to get up there to eat that fresh hairball. This is, this is, <laughs> this is my life. Ah. <laughs> uh. All right, anyway, <laughs> come out, come back out so that I can steal you and put you downstairs. I know that is TMI for sure. And on that note, I just need the pixie to come out of her shredded ottoman layer. I don't know if you can see it. You can see the destruction under the the ottoman. It used to be nice. It used to have nice things, sort of. <laughs> Hi! Hi! Are you ready for snacks and stuff? So we'll have some snacks and naps and a wee nap soon. All right, I'm gonna switch the camera and we'll see the kids again. So much easier to transport two kittens at a time. Let's get some more snacks. And I bet you're not gonna eat as many snacks too. Sneaky's excited. Okay, let's 
arrange your stuff. Here's your sock. We're scenting the surgical sock from the pixie, just in case. Just in case she needs it. Here your snacks have moved over to the designated snacky area. There you go. Okay. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. The good times. Oh, it's going to be so quiet with just two of you. All right. I'll see you soon. Enjoy, everybody.